Hello. Since uh, we're approaching 500 subscribers now, which is quite a lot for such a specialized uh, channel here, uh, I'll show my face. This is me here. I'm actually very interested in uh, historic recordings. I'm a radio journalist and uh, this is a, a wax record, which is about five centimeters thick or maybe 10, uh, quite heavy actually. And uh, it comes from the German radio station in Berlin from the 1920s, I think from 1925. I found it in the German uh, Rundfunkarchiv, which is the archive for radio. Well, that's uh, off topic, really. Uh, on topic is FX here. Um, in Maya, you have different systems, and one of them is XGen. We covered some XGen things in previous tutorials. Same here, MASH, great um, module here in Maya. They are not compatible. So when you create an XGen simulation, it won't be ad adapted by MASH and the other way around. Uh, as well and uh, the old system <clears throat> and I really don't want to call it old or legacy uh, because it's still very current but it's uh, it's been with Maya since the very first version is the fields and solvers section here where you have gravity etc and uh, the key things are the active rigid body and the passive rigid body so when you create a simulation with uh, say a sphere and you turn this into an active rigid body it doesn't do anything because it needs a field and uh, you can give it that field like gravity and then it would fall down according to gravity which is fine and which was a tremendous achievement back in, to, in the year 2000 just around 2000 now when you have a plane here and uh, you make this a passive rigid body it will be hard and the sphere will feel it and it will just pop there and be reflected and if you rotate uh, the the plane the motion will change accordingly so this is trivial these days but it was an amazing achievement back uh, 20 years ago so um, when you have a cloth simulation, N cloth, um, you cannot use the hard body dynamics which we've just showed uh, because there are two different worlds. Uh, remember, we created a gravitation node in the outliner. Uh, N cloth works with uh, a nucleus, which is the gravitation system, and uh, that's a different system. So when you want to use N cloth and soft body dynamics in this case uh, it's uh, it's wise to stay in that realm and I'll show you why okay let's create um, this object here and under polyplane you find the subdivision and let's just raise this because for cloth we need lots of polygons we move it up a little bit and uh, we will just go to N cloth and create N cloth. This is N cloth. Uh, I don't want to run the simulation now, it will just fall down and deform slightly. Uh, instead, I'll uh, select it and create a new material for it. I create an Arnold standard surface shader and I change the color to red. So this is our cloth. It's very soft, I can tell you, you'll see that in a minute. Um, it will fall down like this, and that's all there is now. Now let's go to the top view. Press the key F to go closer. And <clears throat> uh, right mouse button and go to vertex. We select the vertices, which are the little dots here, the red dots here. Uh, let's select the nine ones in the top left corner. You can select 12 or 100 or 2 uh, as well. And then we go to N constraint. So we're still in the N cloth, N hair, N cloth, uh, N constraint, N cache uh, realm, and uh, which has nothing to do with fields and solvers, really. We have the nucleus here, 
which runs, which drives our uh, simulation. And uh, all the additional n things we'll add now, like the n constraint, will respect that nucleus here. So n constraint, the simplest constraint which kind of uh, holds our cloth is the transform constraint. So you need to be under fx, you go to n constraint, and with several points selected, you just click transform constraint. So you see something is happening here, so the constraint is there. Do you want to see our simulation now? Well, that's what it does. But that's not what we want. <clears throat> we want to go to vertex again and select the nine ones up here. And now I press the key G, which repeats the last command. I could instead go to, with the uh, point selected, to end constraint again, transform constraint, etc. But uh, this makes, uh, it's like a shortcut. Repeat the last command is the key G, uh, at least here on Windows. So the same thing here, G. And the same thing with the last corner, G. Now the simulation, you can imagine what it looks like. And I think i make the background black now. It's uh, Alt-B, Alt-B, now it's black. And that's what we get. In order to see this a little bit longer, we extend the playback range to 500 frames. We have that beautiful Arnold shader. And now when we create a sphere, make it smaller of course, we want the sphere to fall into the cloth and we create a solver, like here, active rigid body or just straight away gravity. It will fall down but they won't feel each other. That's what I mean by it's not compatible. It's a, an incompatible system. You just can delete it and delete the gravity field because the gravity field is something different from the nucleus. We are dealing with the nucleus today. Actually, we're not dealing with it. It's just there and it, uh, it's very comfortable to work with. So the next thing is <clears throat> we create balls of another way, in, in another way. So go to n particles because we're in the n system and cloth and particles they work together very well and we go to the create options and you select balls balls have several advantages you see them properly they have uh, a shader which by the way is not uh, respected by Arnold but Arnold will render them but not with the colors you actually see here in the viewport and with balls selected here in the create options you can now create an emitter Go to the option box just to make sure that you're in the default settings, edit reset settings, and here it's an omnidirectional which uh, expels uh, particles, 100 particles per second, uh, etc. So uh, that's fine. And it uses the nucleus one. That's that nucleus. It's the same one which uh, is working with the cloth. So let's apply this and close that window. The emitter is here we move it a little bit up here in the outline you see the emitter and now it will ex uh, ex uh, emit balls well they totally cover <laughs> our little cloth because they're so big so how do we make them smaller the size of the particles are not a matter of the emitter. The emitter emits so and so many particles in that direction, but the size is a, a matter of the n particles as such. So select the n particles in the outliner, you see them appear here, and here you have the third section from the top is the particle size. It's currently set to the default settings of 0 0.2, so let's make 0 0.04 for example that looks good um, now you have them fall down and some of them assemble in the cloth what does the cloth do does the cloth actually react to the mass of the balls 
well let's return to alt b do we see any changes down here well we don't know so how about increasing the mass of the particles where is the mass well it's under dynamic properties and here is the mass it's currently set to one let's make them really heavy and now you see deformations here so the balls actually deform the cloth And if we made them smaller, even smaller, you would see that more drastically. So they're very heavy now. The cloth doesn't tear, as you see. It gets lower and lower under that load of uh, balls, but it doesn't tear. We have very stable positions here. Let's go to frame 100, for example. Select all the dynamic constraints here, only the dynamic constraints, and set a keyframe for them, key S. Now we move one, two, three, four, five frames further, and we press S again, so the locators are at the same position. Now we go back two frames, or four, or three, and we raise the locators, all four of them, by quite quite an amount and set another key so basically the locators are sitting here this level all of a sudden they go up and then go, go down again and this of course will shake the balls everything normal and now we're approaching that shaking process yups let's get a little bit closer We're approaching it now. Since they're very heavy, they don't really move that high. We can make them lighter again if we wanted to. The mass is still here. Will be a totally different simulation. They're much jumpier now. Whoops. Yeah. So, um, next thing we want to do is I'll just play with the constraints a little bit um, let's go to the top window again that's what we see here lots of particles really so let's select the first dynamic constraint press the key W because we want to move it and we move it here and we do the same thing with this one we move them away from the cloth and set a keyframe for all of them. Select all of them, set a keyframe here. So at key it's currently 180, they will stretch outside. What happens? So first they will shake in just a second. In now, yeah. And now the cloth stretches. It's get, getting much flatter. And of course the balls simulation changes accordingly it's a much wider area and now uh, we will select just the constraint number one maybe that's that one and here in the attribute editor you have the section of constraint density range there are just two key parameters here one is the strength how strongly it holds the, the, uh, the that edge of the cloth and even more interesting is the glue strength so I'll play I'll reduce the glue strength which is currently set to one which means totally glued um, I, I'll reduce it while the animation plays back and I'll wait just a little bit and now I'll reduce the glue strength and now it tears off
So I need to raise the glue strength a little bit, like one zero point two maybe. It sits here, lots of weight, and the glue is kind of oops. The glue is <laughs> not strong enough with this locator. So the final thing, of course, is a nice rendering. And as I said, uh, Arnold doesn't respect the colors which we currently see of the particles. And this is, I think, this is the... <laughs> it's so dramatic, lovely. Um, I will render it now. Um, I need a light, of course. Lights, sky dome light, Arnold render. That's what we're getting. Lots of particles, and the particles have the proper size, but not the proper shader. And that's uh, a topic for another tutorial, really, to shade them properly. Uh, but uh, one thing we need to do here in this case is we need to apply motion blur. Of, of course, we can do that. Uh, we go to the render settings, which is this icon. And under Arnold, we activate motion blur enable motion blur now let's see how this renders out you see Arnold needs to replay the simulation and once it reaches this point it will properly do our motion blur of course it will re render the motion blur of the cloth as well it's still rendering it's cleaning up now, anti-aliasing. So a simulation in the N world is not compatible to a simulation in the rigid body dynamics world, which we've known from many previous versions of Maya. There are ways around it, but they're complicated. And I hope you play with the particles and the cloth, N particles, N cloth, N hair and N constraints. Have a nice day.